Good morning, this is Karen with Karen's Cards and More, and I'm so glad you joined me this morning. Today I'm going to feature a non-traditional Christmas card. You know, we think of the reds and the greens and even the blue and the silver combinations as beautiful Christmas cards, but I wanted to do something outside the norm. Um, actually, it was for a swap that I was doing where the challenge was to do a non-traditional Christmas card. So that's what we're doing today, and I love glittery, sparkly, uh, anything that has some shine. And so uh, that's that's what you're gonna see featured in this card that we're gonna do this morning. Um, just to, to mention, I am a independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So if you would like any of the products that I'm showing this mor the, today, um, you can order them at my online store at karensmith.stampinup.net. Um, I also have a Facebook group and a Facebook page, as well as my YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, be sure to do that. Hit the notification bell, and you'll be notified every time I upload a video. And stay tuned. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you some special projects that I'm going to be doing for the month of September in my Facebook pay on my Facebook page, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that. So stay tuned at the end of the video for that. So let's talk about the card. For this card, I used the Poinsettia Petals um, stamp set and die set. Uh, the stamps that I'm going to use are just the greetings, but for the um, leaves and the, the flower and the little uh, special twigs there, those all came from the coordinating die set, and I'll show you that as well. So that's the set that you're going to need for this card, Poinsettia Petals and the coordinating die set. Okay, so let's talk about what you need for the actual card stock. So I started with my card base, which is eight and a half, um, eight and a half by five and a half, scored in the middle at four and a quarter, standard card base. And then my first mat is the um, petal pink, and this is four by five and a quarter. And then I want to show you this beautiful paper. I think this is easy to overlook in the catalog. And I wanna show you, it comes in a pack with the gold and the rose gold. And it's easily overlooked in the catalog. I'm gonna bring this in, hopefully I can get this in the camera. It's just down here in this little corner on page 135. And it just shows it just a corner of it down here. And it's so easy to flip through the catalog and miss this. But this is beautiful paper. It comes in six by six sheets and you get some of the gold and some of the rose gold. Um, you get four of each. And let me show you this. These are just beautiful. Great for Christmas cards or adding sparkle to any card. I love the rose gold, but the gold is beautiful as well. But I wanted to show you that because I've been through that catalog. I don't know how many times that I missed this. And then when I saw it, I was like, oh, I have to have this. So we're using the rose gold this morning. And this piece is three and three quarter by five. And it's going to be a second mat for us. Then you're going to need a strip of the petal pink, and this is three quarter inch tall. Um, it really doesn't matter how long, because we're gonna cut it after we um, put our greeting on there. So just a strip. Then for the inside, let me show you the inside of the card. I used the rose gold just as a trim, and then um, did my sentiment my greeting. So I just cut, this is just a quarter inch strip that I cut of the rose gold for the inside. Then let's talk about the die cuts and I'm going to open up my die cut so I can show you what I used. Okay, first of all, from the silver, let me bring that in, show you what they look like. This is the silver and I used this die cut here, and I cut two of these out of silver. Okay, those are pretty easy. Then there's two different size leaves. There's this size and this size. I cut one of each, and I cut it out of 
the, the new in colors, there's some, um, there's some vellum in the colors of the new in colors. And it's, I'm trying to see, it's in color shimmer vellum. And it's on the same page of this 135. Um, you can see it down here. And it comes in each of the, this is the soft succulent. So I cut one of the larger and one of the smaller. And let me show you how to do that. Because if, you, if you've not worked with these kind of dies, you may say, how did you get that? Well, let me just pull out. Here's the larger one. Here's the smaller one. But if you just cut with this, you're just going to get the out the the outline of the leaf. But if you run it through your die cut with this piece in the center, that's how you're going to get the ribbing on your leaf. So let me bring the leaf back in to show you what I mean. And I don't know how well you'll see this in the camera but there's ribbing in that leaf, okay? So that's how you do that. In the same way with the poinsettias, and you're gonna see the ribbing a lot better in these. So I kept one of the large, one of the medium, and one of the small. And I did it the same way. You wanna cut it, you wanna use both pieces. The outside will cut it, but then that inside, the inner piece, will give you the ribbing. Okay, Got, I hope that's clear. So you definitely wanna use both pieces. You could cut it without that inside panel and you're just gonna get the outline shape. You won't have the ribbing on the petals. And I wanted the ribbing and I'll show you why. I'll show you how you're gonna add a little glitz and glamor to our poinsettias. Um, but to do that, you'll need the inside piece to get the ribbing on the flower petals, okay? Hopefully that all makes sense. So let's go ahead and do our stamping first because we're gonna do some um, heat embossing. So let's get that part done first. So on the inside of the card, just towards the middle, we're going to do, um, from the stamp set, I'm using, so here's the Merry Christmas for the outside. And this says, May Magic, and wonder bloom this holiday. I don't know why I was having trouble reading that. I'm gonna straighten that up on that block. Okay. And so I'm going to bring in my Versamark ink. And I'm also going to need my embossing buddy. And I'm going to need my silver embossing powder, okay? So let's start by taking this, and you always want to use your embossing bay. Now, Stampin' Up! does not sell these anymore. Um, I am working on a blog site. When I get that up and running, I will have links to some of the products that I use a lot that are not Stampin' Up! Um, in case you want to see what those are, but you can get these on Amazon pretty easy. So then I'm going to come in with my Versamark ink. And I'm just going to ink this up. What the embossing buddy does is it will help the um, embossing powder stick only where there's the Versamark instead of sticking to your cardstock in places that you don't want it. Okay, so I'm going to come in with this and I'm just putting this, just trying to center it, knowing that I'm going to have that strip across there. So I'm just gonna press that down. Okay, and I'm just going to move this over a little bit because we'll do all of our embossing powder at once and I'm gonna bring in my strip. This is for the front. And again, I'm going to use my embossing buddy. And then we're just gonna stamp the greeting. And you want to keep this, because of uh, the way we're doing this, you want to keep it towards the right-hand side. Just pinking this up. Okay. And I'm just going to stamp this towards the end. So I'm going to stamp that down. Okay. We're done with the Versamark. 
So now I'm going to just bring in um, a scrap piece of paper. This is just a scrap that I was using for something else. And I'm gonna bring in my silver. And I'm just going to put the powder. And I usually go over it a couple times just to make sure it sticks. And then tap it off. You can, you can do this behind it. Whatever works, you can blow on it. But that looks pretty good. And I'm just gonna set that aside. And I'm just gonna pour this back in so that I can bring in the other piece. And this is where I'm gonna to have to see what happens. I may have to redo this just because I put my hand in it. I'm just going to put that over that. Oh, no, it worked perfect. My hand did not mess it up, good thing. Now I wanna show you, and I don't know how well this will show up, but I have just a little speck right in the W. And I'm just gonna use my Take Your Pick tool. You could use a small um, uh, paintbrush, and I'm just gonna get that out. There's another small speck. If you do some cleanup before you emboss it, you can take those little extra pieces off. And that looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to get this all back in my jar. Close that up. And just, just for, um, to make sure I don't have any lingering powder, I'm just gonna wipe off my space in case I do have any powder that it's not going to stick. Now, I will tell you when you're using your heat tool, um, you wanna be careful of your surface. So don't put this right on your surface or you could um, hurt your surface. So be cautious of doing that. Um, so I'm just using, I don't have the Stampin' Up! heat tool. I, I That's one of my list to get. Um, but I'm just going to use my heat tool and go over these and you will see these change. You will see it go from a matte type look to the glossy look and that's how you'll know that they're done. And um, I'm gonna start this in regular speed but you'll see that I'll either speed it up or cut, you know, cut it out so that you don't have to watch the whole process because I, I'm sure you've seen this many times. So I'm gonna turn this on and let it get warm you want to get it hot and then I'm going to heat emboss these okay Got that done. Now, let's go ahead and work on our flower petals because we have something we need to do with those and we wanna have a little chance to dry. And I'm going to bring in a dark scrap piece of cardstock that I've used for plenty of things. Let me try to wipe it off just a little bit. Got some powder on it, so I'm gonna wipe that off. Okay. So let me show you what I'm going to do with these leaves or with these petals. So you can see where we ran them through, we have the ridges. I'm going to come in with my Wink of Stella. So all I did is I just ran this along the edges, just in, that, in the divots made in the, in the petals. So you have the ridges from the die cut, and I just added ink, uh, Wink of Stella inside those ridges. So that just give me a little bit of sparkle on each petal. 
So I'm just going through just like that. I'm just gonna move those to the side and let them dry. And we're ready to start putting the card together. So I'm gonna bring in our card base. It doesn't take much, Just you just need a little. And that's probably way more than I need. Okay. So I'm going to have to really be careful laying this on there because I have way more glue than I need and it will definitely probably squash out. So I'm just going to press that down. And the other thing with the liquid glue is you have a little time to move it. I'm gonna turn that over and I do need to trim just a tad. So I'm just gonna trim that excess. Just a little. Okay, now, I do want to show you, I have a little bit of glue that's squished out. And this is another thing that um, I love to have. These are glue erasers. And Stampin' Up! does not sell these, but you can get these on Amazon as well. And they will erase that little bit of glue. It's just like erasing pencil. This does the same thing. So you can just erase that glue right off and you have no more sticky. So I'm just gonna run my finger along there, make sure that I have no more sticky. Okay. All right, so that's got that part done. Now, keep in mind, if this is the inside, when you shut this, this is going to be the front that we need to decorate, okay? So we're gonna start with our petal pink panel petal pink panel <laughs> and I'm just going to put since I've got the liquid glue out I'm just going to go ahead and use it the, the nice thing about the liquid glue is you do have a little bit of time um, to get it it's easier to get it straight um, and even because you can move it a little bit where with the stamp and seal, when you put it down, it's hard to move. So I'm gonna go ahead and put our next panel on, which is our rose gold. This is just so pretty. Definitely wanna check this out in the catalog. If you like sparkly and shiny as much as I do, you'll want to get some of this. So I'm just going to make sure I got it where I want it and press down. So our front is basically done. We're down to decorating. So I'm going to bring in, we're going to be using, um, you wouldn't have to use this. And I did some um, modifying once I did use it, but we're gonna be using this take, take your pick banner punch. Um, but I'm going to set that aside for a minute, and I'm going to set this aside for a minute, because I want to work on putting our poinsettia together. So that Because it's going to need a moment to um, set for the glue. So let me show you what I did. I took a, a paintbrush. It doesn't have to be a paintbrush. It could be anything with just a small, thin handle. Um, and I took each of my pieces to my poinsettia and you don't want to pull hard. If you pull hard, you're going to rip the petal right off. So just with a easy hand, I just curled it backwards. And I did this to each of the flowers and I, I didn't want a harsh crease, right? Just to give it some dimension. And I did the largest one a little more gave it a little more of a backwards curl than I did the, each size, I went a little bit less, and you'll see in a minute. And then I kind of push the petals. I wanted the tops to curl back, but then I kind of push where they come together in the center to give it that kind of look. 
almost like a spider with legs look. So I'm gonna do the same thing to the, and just a, a tad, a, you know, just not much of a curl, just enough of a curl to give it a little bit of life. And then again, I'm pushing the petals up at, at the base because those are going to layer together like that. And that's what's gonna make your card, your um, flower stand up from the top of your card and not be flat. And this little one, I'm just giving a little tiny bit of a curl. Okay, and then I'm going to push those up as well. Just like that. So I want the ends to curl back like that. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of the liquid glue in the center. Ooh. I'm going to go ahead and dab a little of this up. That's the problem with a new bottle. It, it, it's easy to get it to come out. Okay, so you want to offset these. You don't want to put them, the petals to be directly on top of each other. You want to offset it. So I'm going to offset this. And I'm just moving it around to see where I like the offset. And I like it there. And I'm just holding the center down just for a second to let it let the glue adhere and then I'm going to put a little bit of glue in the center of this and again I want to offset just like that and I'm just going to hold it down just for a second we're going to move that out of the way we're going to bring our card base in now this is where you want to do a little dry fitting before you glue everything down. Because once you glue it down, it's too late. Let's go ahead and get this, the, the strip. We're going to use this banner punch. And I'm just going to put this in here. And what I like to do is I turn it over. And I can see, I can look at the um, space on both ends to make sure it's centered. And I'm just going to punch that. And then I'm just going to cut this off. <clears throat> now this part doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be tucked up under our flower. You could do this on your trimmer if you want to make sure it's straight, but it really doesn't matter because it's going to be tucked up underneath. So this is where I'm dry fitting because I need to know that this is going to fit on the card base and not, I don't want this to be sticking like that. And I want it to go at an angle. So I'm, I'm looking at my flower placement to see where can I put my flower, where it's not hanging off the card and how I can put this on. And that looks pretty good and I don't need to do any any additional mitering. You could miter this back a little if you needed to, but I think that works really well just like that. And it still can be in my card base. I could even go a little bit like that. Move that just a little. You can play with the angle of it. Or I could go down here, I could turn my petals, just kind of looking at your placement. And I could go, oh, I like that, I think even better. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this piece down. I'm going to move this back out of the way and I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat just for gluing. You can tell this is well loved. And I'm just going to add, I'm gonna to try to add just a little glue.
and I'm going to place this where I want it in the corner at the angle that I want it. So then I, I can place my flower. Okay, just like that. So I'm just going to take some glue and I'm going to put a little glue on the back of my flower. And I'm just going to, and I may have to turn this once I, because I picked it up, now I got to figure out where I had it. And I think just like that. And I'm okay if it covers up a little bit of the um, curl of the M. That's fine with me. If you don't want it to do that, then you need to think about that when you're putting it on. So I'm just going to hold that for a minute and let it get glued down. And then I'm just going to do some, just some fluffing, okay, of those petals to get the curl back just a little bit because we've already curled them. So I'm just... If I can get my fingers in there, I'm just going to press a little of the curl just to keep them curled. Because where we manipulated them, the curl got a little bit smashed. So I'm just I'm just reinforcing the curl. Okay. Just like that. All right. Now I'm going to come in, we're ready to add our leaves and our silver things, silver things, I don't know what else to call them. So you can figure out where you want to put them. And so I wanted to put the small leaf at the top and one of the silver things at the top. And I'm just dry fitting at this point. I think I like them like that, okay. So I'm going to glue the leaf down first. I'm just putting a little bit of glue at the bottom of that leaf. And I'm just going to tuck that under. And I'm just going to lift that up a little bit so I can give some pressure to that leaf. And then I'm going to do the same thing. And with this, you definitely want to use a little bit, just little dots. I just did little dots. Um, maybe even the fine tip glue would be better for this because you just want a little bit. And I just did it at the base, just right here towards the bottom. I didn't glue the top because it's just a little bit of glue is gonna hold it, okay? So then I stuck this under. Just like that. And push that down. Now again, the top isn't glued down. You could glue it all the way down if you wanted. I liked that little bit of elevated look there. Um, you could bend it down a little bit bend it back a little bit so it's not sticking up, um, but you could tack it down with glue if you wanted. So then I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom, just adding a little bit of glue. And I'm going to add this underneath, just like that. And then I'm going to come and do the same thing That's why you gotta reach under the petal with your finger and just hold it down for a second for the glue to um, adhere. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with this and add it down here. So again, I'm just putting a little bit of glue
just little little dots and I'm going to tuck that under there like that and just hold it down for a moment so the glue can have a chance to to do its thing okay and then for the center of the flower um, if you still have from last year they, they are um, discontinued, so we don't have them this year. Last year, when the poinsettia thing came out, we had these, the poinsettia set, we had these beaded pearls. And I wanna show you to, this to you in case you still have some of these from last year. They're these little, um, there's like three pearls. That would make a beautiful center for this. So if you still have some of these left, then by all means, go ahead and use those. But I didn't have any left, so I thought, what could I do? Well, I do have them left, but I didn't wanna show something that you couldn't go to the store and buy. So I tried to figure out what else could I do um, to mimic that look. And so I pulled out my Elegant Faceted Gems, and some of them have a pearl look to them. So what I did, and I'm gonna move this stuff out of the way, um, so what I did is right in the center, I put one of the large ones. My, I am all thumbs this morning. I'm using my take your pick tool and I'm just going to put one, the large one, right. In. Now you could stop just like that, but what I did is I came in with the little ones and at the base of each of the small petals, I put a little one right up against that large one in the center, just to give it like a flower look, um, if that makes sense, with the gems. So just right at the base of the small poinsettia petals, I just put one of the small gems. And you'll see in a moment, and I pushed it right up against the large one. And it gives it like a little flower look. And then you can straighten them around if, if you want if you want different spacing. Um, but that just gives a little bit of pizzazz. And then I looked at the card and I thought we need something else. So also in the catalog are these, these are in the new mini catalog, I believe, the subtle shimmer sequins. And there's there's in this, there's silver and there's white. There's just a whole bunch of different um, sequins. So what I did is I just took and put three little dots of glue, just randomly, just like that. And then I came in with the end of my take your pick tool, has the um, gummy stuff on the end. I need to get mine turned up a little bit more. So I'm just using that gummy to pick up a sequin and I'm just going to put that down in that dot of glue. And, and it probably is just as easy if you have tweezers to use tweezers, but I just, to get them picked up out of here it was easier for me to use this than to try to get my fingers down in there. So I'm going to put this one here. And then I use the end to just kind of press it down in the glue to make sure that it's um, solid in the glue. Just like that. And then just let it set and let that glue dry. If you go messing with those right now, um, they're going to move on you because the glue's not dry. So just let it set, let them dry, and then you'll be able to 
fold your card base. You can come in with your bone folder and go over your creases. Just going to go along the crease just to help it close. And there you have your card. It's all done and you have a beautiful Christmas card that's not the traditional colors, but yet still says a personal touch. I hope you've enjoyed this card, and I did promise you that I would show you what's in store um, for the month of September, starting with Monday night. Every Monday night, I do a live on my Facebook page, um, and then I will put the videos on YouTube, but you can craft along with me if you join me for the Facebook Live. If you've not liked and followed my page, please do that. You can join my Facebook group, and I post stuff there as well. But let me show you the projects for the month of September. Um, it's featuring the Love of Leaves stamp set with the coordinating die set. Um, the first Monday, which is going to be next week, we didn't do it Labor Day, so starting Monday, we're going to make this card. The following Monday, we're going to feature this card. And then the following Monday, I was thinking of the kids and back to school, we're going to make this pencil case. So if you like these projects, you can join me. Um, you can buy, if it, I do this every month, I feature a different set. So if the month before you've ordered $50 worth of product from me, you'll get the card kits for free um, for the following month. The card kits you can buy individually. If you like just one of the cards, you can buy the card kit for $10 individually. And what the card kit comes with, everything you need to make four of these cards, except the stamp set. I'll have all the die cuts done. I'll, I'll have the ribbon done. Um, all you'll have to do is tie your bow. I'll have all the pieces cut, and all you have to do is do the stamping and put it together. But you'll you need your own stamp set. So for $10, you can get enough to make four cards. If you like all of the month's project and you didn't order $50 worth of stuff, you can buy the kits for all four for $25, and that's enough to make four of each. If you just want the PDF tutorial, um, then you can get that for $10, and that would just be the PDF tutorial with all the measurements and the step-by-step -step directions for each of the projects. So... Check out my Facebook group, my Facebook page. That it'll show, it'll give you all those details, um, and it will also. I also have already posted what we're going to be doing for the month of October. So if you want to order in September for what we're doing in October, you'll be able to do that as well. So I just wanted to show that and talk a little bit about my Facebook lives in case you have missed that. I have enjoyed my time crafting with you today, and I will craft with you again soon.